Hello and welcome. My logbook tells me that I learnt to fly in a Cessna 150 in 1968 at the Royal Aero Club at Chandicott, West Australia. Later I was endorsed on the C172, PA28, Cessna 152 and the Cessna 182RG. I have flown as a pilot's buddy in many other aircraft. In 52 years I haven't had an accident but I've had a lot of fun along the way. I thought I would tell you a little about the iconic Cessna training aircraft, the model Cessna 152. It is an American two-seat fixed tricycle aircraft, a successor to the 150 and was in production from 1977 until 1985. A total of 7,584 were produced. Many are still airworthy and flying today. The C-152 was intended to compete with the new Beechcraft Skipper and Piper Tomahawk, both of which were introduced the same year. It was designed to improve useful load through a gross weight increase to 760 kilo, decrease internal and external noise levels and run better on the newly introduced 100 low lead fuel. The great majority of 152s were built in the Cessna factory in Wichita, Kansas. The engine was the Lycoming 0235, producing 110 horsepower at 2550 rpm. In 1983 that was superseded by the Lycoming 108 horsepower engine. The airframe is mainly of aluminium alloy construction with riveted skin. Components such as the wingtips and fairings are made from glass reinforced plastic. The fuselage is a semi monocoque with vertical bulkheads and frames joined by longerons running the length of the fuselage. The wings are a strut based design, have one degree dihedral angle and one degree of washout at the tapered outboard portion of each wing. This allows greater aileron effectiveness during a stall. Most 152s have dual controls. The single slotted flaps are electrically operated and deploy to a maximum of 30 degrees. The adjustable trim tab is installed on the right elevator controlled from the cockpit. The braking system consists of single disc brake assemblies fitted to the main gear and operate by pushing on the top portions of the rudder pedals. Many modifications were available for the 152. The most frequently installed include a tail wheel has been fitted to some 152s. The wings can be modified using a number of short takeoff and landing options, some improving speed or cruise performance, but most concentrating on the stall performance. Brake gap seals to reduce drag and increase rate of climb. Auxiliary fuel tanks for greater range. Door catches to replace the factory ones that often fail in service. Boy, do they ever. Belly fuel drains to drain fuel from the lowest point in the fuel system. There is an aerobatic 152 known as the Aerobat, of which 315 were built. It was certified for plus six and minus three G and had standard four point harnesses, skylights and jettisonable doors along with a checkerboard paint scheme and removable seat cushions to allow parachutes to be worn by the crew. The following aerobatic manoeuvres are approved. Chondelles, steep turns, barrel rolls, snap rolls, loops, vertical reversements, lazy eights, spins, aileron rolls, immobile turns, Cuban eights and stalls except whip stalls. And I've done most of those. Now for some statistics. The 152 had a wing area of 15 square metres and an empty weight of 490 kilos. Gross weight was 757 kilo. There is a two bladed fixed pitch propeller, maximum speed 109 knots, cruise 107 knots, though I rarely achieved that. It stalled at 43 knots with flaps down and power off. The range was 415 nautical miles. Service ceiling was 14,700 feet and a rate of climb 715 feet per minute. Cessna do not make a two-seater training aircraft anymore. The four-seat C-172 Skyhawk has taken over, but not for the reasons you might believe. 
all Cessna propeller aircraft production was shut down in 1986 due to losses from continual product liability lawsuits over airplane crashes. In essence, from 1986 until 1992, Cessna confined itself to producing corporate biz jets and military aircraft. With Cessna's light plane fleet numbering over 100,000 in use for decades longer than most automobiles, the number of potential lawsuits from airplane crashes was astronomical. Cessna vowed to return if and when Congress passed the law limiting lawsuits. In 1994, Congress passed the General Aviation Revitalization Act, which protected manufacturers from lawsuits over very old aircraft. So Cessna brought back their most popular planes, the 172 Skyhawk, 182 Skyline, and the 206 Station Air back into production but not the C-150 or C-152. Cessna reopened the single engine line at a new factory in Independence, Kansas, well away from Wichita Unions and other aircraft plants competing for trained workforce. By now, training organizations realized that it made sense to start with the C-172 because when you start navigation exercise, you need their longer range. 44,000 C-172s have been produced, making it the most popular single-engine aircraft ever built. They now come with glass cockpits, such as the G-1000 Avionics, and have a range of 640 nautical miles, a cruise of 124 knots. Useful load is double that of the 152, and their stall speed is similar. Unlike the Aerobat, the Skyhawk is not rated for aerobatics. Thank you for watching.